Good morning. Welcome to the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria, where our church's mission is embracing freedom, loving inclusively, growing spiritually, and healing our world. My name is Jessie Laughlin, and I am the Director of Lifespan Religious Education here at UUCP. Ours is a liberal religious faith, open to all, regardless of ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, creed, politics, or other distinction. And this congregation dates back to 1843 and was once the largest universalist congregation in the country. Further back than that, the land that our church sits on was the home of the Peoria people. We honor them for who they are today and who they were when they cared for this place. Let me thank you for joining us today, whether in person or online. It's an act of courage to seek connection and larger purpose in this day and age. If you're new, help us get to know you. Wear your name tag. If you've been here a while, wear your name tag. And join us in Fellowship Hall or the Zoom room after surface for coffee and connection. There are a couple of changes that we're doing with the service because things evolve, things change. First, I'm up here today. Rev. Jen gets the Sunday off. Um, we're moving a little things during worship so that we can give the kids a little more time in back. Um, the welcome can take place in coffee hour as you greet your neighbor. Um, maybe look over and say, hey, I'd love to chat with you later and invite someone in into coffee hour. And we're also going to be moving our offering to after the recessional, when the, after the kids leave today. If anybody needs a little extra help to make service accessible today, there's some hearing devices available. See an usher and they'll help you out with that. We have some fidgets if you're feeling a little wiggly and need something for your fingers to do during worship. We've got a kid-friendly space, a scent-free space, large print hymnals, and if there's anything else we can do, let us know. So take a moment now to check your devices. Make sure they're turned to worship mode, which would be silent or buzzy. And uh, I'll do just a couple announcements while you do that. If you haven't yet, take a moment and register your kids or youth for religious education. I would love to have a complete list of who's going to be joining us every Sunday so I can get everybody's rooms all set up this week, and we'll be starting next week. Also, next Saturday, there's a lot happening at the church. The keepers of the Great Grove Cups group will be doing some trail work in the Grove. It's important to get our trail in Nice order before the haunted forest at the end of next month. So come on out on Saturday morning and help us out. And then a little celebration after that on Saturday evening, we have a fall harvest potluck with uh, two different autumnal soups. Thanks to Eric Brubaker. And next Sunday, because everything happens in the same weekend, uh, we have our Connections Fair. Find out how you can connect to UUCP and what groups you can join and ways you can serve. I'd like to take a moment now to invite Sarah Allen up. She's going to tell us a little bit about our Covenant Circles and why you might want to join one. Thank you. Okay, what is a covenant circle? Most of you know, many of you have been involved in covenant circles, but we have a lot of new people this year for which we're very grateful. 
So we uh, thought you might want to know a little bit about Covenant Circles. A Covenant Circle is a group of between four and ten people that meet every other week, usually twice a month. Um, we have groups that meet in the church, and there's one group that meets mostly virtually. They might have a few people in the church, but most of their members are virtual. So if that appeals to you, we do have a group for you. Who can join a Covenant Circle? Everyone don't need to be a member to join. Why do we call them covenant circles? Because at the beginning of the year, all the members of the group get together and figure out how to make a covenant of how we'll be together. Every covenant is slightly different, but they have the common ideas as follows. Whatever's said in the covenant circle stays in the covenant circle, so there's a great deal of confidentiality. We treat each other with respect and understand that relationships are more important than winning arguments. We listen without interrupting. This is probably a learned skill that we're all still working on, even those of us that have been in covenant circles for years. Covenant circles are also referred to as small group ministry because we minister to each other. How? We listen without judgment. We provide a safe place for people to reveal themselves. What happens at Covenant Circle meetings? We each have an opportunity to speak from our hearts about what is going on in our lives and how we're feeling. After everyone has had an opportunity to speak, we have a topic that we discuss. What kind of topics are discussed? Often the same ones that you hear about in Reverend Jennifer's sermons. For instance, the topic for September is welcoming, so we may talk about how we welcome aspects of ourselves and others. Welcome is referred to as radical hospitality and can be a holy act. Why join a covenant circle? You'll become close friends with the people in your circle. If coffee hour seems intimidating or the conversations are too surface for you, consider joining a covenant circle. If you want to widen your group of friends at church, consider joining a covenant circle. You will deepen your spiritual life by wrestling with diverse topics in a meaningful way. You will find that it's a joy to be heard, listened to, without anyone interrupting or barely waiting to tell you how they would solve your problem. Sometimes we just want to be seen and heard. Okay, so if I've convinced you and you're interested in joining a covenant circle, how would you do so? There's a sign-up sheet in the atrium, and somebody will be there to help you. I joined the church 15 years ago, and I never really felt like I was a part of the church until I joined my first covenant circle. All of a sudden, I had friends that I could see in coffee hour and people that I could feel comfortable with and expand my friendship circle. So a covenant circle might do the same for you. Thank you. Our opening words this morning is the great teachers in life. We are seekers on a quest, a quest to discover truth and meaning. Sometimes we think we found it, wrapped up, glimmering with newness, straight off the intellectual assembly line. All the answers right here for us, and others if they'd only listen. But truth has a way of coming in disguise, sometimes wearing rags and sometimes finery but so often cloaked from our immediate sight. And sometimes that which we have rejected, that which we have let go of or decided was only for others, but not for us, can be our teacher. Let our time of worship be an acknowledgement of the never ending journey toward truth and meaning and our appreciation of those we learn from along the way. And the Spezrud family will be lighting the chalice for us this morning.
Well, my helper is shy this morning. Remember? You're just going to be behind. Okay. Well, they can't see you behind me. I don't care. <laughs> um, this is The Heart of a UU by Adina Denuf. We kindle this flame. Can you do it with me? Okay. I'm going to do it by myself. We kindle this flame to honor the heart of a Unitarian Universalist, someone who shows strength, someone who lends a helping hand, and someone who seeks adventure. And now, if you could all rise as you're willing or able and sing along to us for the first hymn, number 346, come sing a song with me. Our hearts all hold many joys and many sorrows. Being part of a community, sharing those can help lift others up when times are hard. Help us bear the weight or make our celebrations even greater. Today, we send our congratulations and best wishes to Nisha Kishore. She's starting an evening program with the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. As an added bonus, 
she received the news of her acceptance on her father's 60th birthday. We extend our sympathy to Sandy Crow and her family as they're mourning the death of her sister, Cherry Van Dyke, known by her family as Bear. She passed on September 15th at the age of 61 in Louisville, Kentucky. We extend our sympathy to Chris Carpenter and the family and friends of Del Carpenter. Del died on September 14th after a one-car accident. Del and Chris were active, long-term members here when they lived in Peoria and raised their family. They've been active in the Cedar Falls Unitarian Universalist Church in Iowa since moving there 25 years ago. And now we invite you all to come forward and light a candle of care for your joys and sorrows. Mm. These collective flames acknowledge each week that the situations in our lives may vary, but our shared light shall illuminate our path.
Now for one of my favorite parts is I get to tell the story. The story today is about a Unitarian Universalist named Sophia Lyon Foz. She did a lot to change our faith. Mama, Mama, why do we just keep going and going but not getting anywhere? Asked little Sophie. Her family was crossing the wide Pacific Ocean. Sophie was on an ocean liner bound for America. She was an American girl of three and a half years old, but she had never been to this country. Her family had been in China. Her parents worked at a church and a school there. And as Sophie grew up, her memories of China grew dim. But she hoped that one day she could go to other countries as a Christian teacher like her parents had been. In college, Sophie met Harvey Foz and they made plans to travel and teach. And six years after they met, they were married. But instead of traveling, Harvey and Sophie moved to New York City. Sophia and Harvey's first child was born in 1904. And being a mother helped Sophia learn even more. She learned from her children's questions and listening to their ideas more than anything. They had really interesting questions like, where does snow come from? Where are we before we're born? And as Sophie tried to answer those questions, she learned she didn't have all the answers. You might think that would be a problem, not having the answers. But Sophie came to think that finding the questions that you wanted to think about was what was most important. Sophie's ideas about religion changed over time as well. She grew to realize that the Bible wasn't the only book with truths in it. So she collected stories from all over the world, filled with truth and beauty, and she published those for children in a book called From Long Ago and Many Lands. In those days, most adults thought children's minds were empty like a jar and they needed to be filled up. Sophia thought, Children were like gardens. They already were planted with seeds. And it was the teacher's job to water those seeds and let the sun shine on them. The president of the Unitarian Association asked Sophia to talk to Unitarian religious educators, people like me, like Emily, like Lindy. And those religious educators, they thought she had some pretty neat ideas. And that's why when you come here, when all of you come here, we encourage you to see and touch, to talk, and to wonder. When she was 82 years old, Sophia became a Unitarian minister. It's not too late. <laughs> her life was a great example of her belief that every person in a congregation should continue to learn all throughout their lifespan. Sophia Foz lived a long time to be 102 years old, and she never stopped learning new things. I wonder how you like to learn. I wonder what helps you 
make meaning. Kathy's going to play our recessional, and the kids are going to head back while I stay here. Miss Amanda is going to Okay. Just the recession. We each use our personal resources to support our very lives by, by providing for our necessities and choosing which desires we can fulfill. The act of giving away some of our resources is an act of sacrifice. It is also a gift that we give to ourselves to build the community we want to have and to share with one another. In this congregation, it's our practice to share the loose cash that we collect on Sunday morning with local agencies that align with our values. This month, one-third of the cash in the plate will be going to Look, It's My Book. Since 2008, Look, It's My Book has been providing up to seven books per year to Peoria and Peoria Heights school children in kindergarten through fourth grades. Look, It's My Book relies on our donations and the donations of a generous community. Thank you for helping make this program successful. When the ushers pass the plate, you may use an envelope to indicate if you're giving for your pledge or if you would like your total gift to go to Look, It's My Book. I call the ushers forward for the offering. Our reading today is a piece written by Sophia Lyon Foz that we heard about just a moment ago. Mike John Garius and Karen Zichterman will be reading for us.
Am I through? Can you hear me? That sounds a little better, doesn't it? Okay. Some beliefs are like walled gardens. They encourage exclusiveness and the feeling of being especially privileged. Other beliefs are expansive and lead the way into wider and deeper sympathies. Some beliefs are like shadows, clouding children's days and fears of unknown calamities. Other beliefs are like sunshine, blessing children with the warmth of happiness. And some beliefs are divisive, separating saved from unsaved, friends from enemies. Other beliefs are bonds in a world community where sincere differences beautify the pattern. Some beliefs are like blinders, shutting off the power to choose one's own direction. And other beliefs are like gateways, opening wide vistas for exploration. Some beliefs weaken a person's selfhood. They blight the growth of resourcefulness. And other beliefs nurture self-confidence and enrich the feeling of personal worth. Some beliefs are rigid, like the body of death, impotent in a changing world. And other beliefs are pliable, like the young sapling, ever growing with the upward thrust of life. Thank you. I invite you to rise once again, as you are willing and able to sing hymn number 1008, Our Heart is in a Holy Place. Thanks for trying something new with me. So, have any of you ever wondered what it is that I do when I head down that hall with the kids? Some of you know. <laughs> you have wondered? We're going to talk about it today. 
I mean, the doors close. It gets a little quieter in here. But what goes on at the end of the hall? Maybe you've seen some pictures. A craft project showed up in Fellowship Hall. Maybe you've even heard us having a little too much fun. Any ideas? What are we doing down there? We're learning. We're all learning, aren't we? Sometimes we're drawing. Sometimes we're building. Over the past year, we've made soup. We've had a dance party. We've created art. We've made a blanket fort. And really, so much more. But those activities are not what we're actually doing. What we're doing when I go down that hallway is so much more. What we're actually doing is faith development. Faith development. Those can be some big words for you, use. Maybe they're words that carry a lot of meaning for you from your past. Maybe they're words you've never thought about in relationship to yourself. Or maybe those words are like a benchmark for you, a signpost that you hold on to sometimes. What I'm thinking about when I say faith development is the process of me growing as a person, of developing and increasing my trust in this faith of Unitarian Universalism in this place of the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria and strengthening my connections. If you would have asked me two years ago about my UU faith development, I would have looked at you a little sideways and not really had much of an answer. I didn't really think of Unitarian Universalism as a faith all the time. Maybe some of you can relate. I identified as a UU. I believed in the principles. Those values are amazing to me. Our sources, I love our sources that we pull from wherever we find truth and meaning. However, I wouldn't have thought about my time here in this building as working on faith development. Today is a little different. I've changed. I spent a lot of time thinking about you, you this year. We're always learning what Unitarian Universalism means in our lives, how to trust it, how does it challenge me, how does it support me in the hard times. So when the kids and I are building forts together and working on our quiet corner and honoring the need inside of us to have a small, sacred place and learning that we can make that place all on our own, that's faith development. When we blast some tunes and fully inhabit our bodies and celebrate the joy we find when we're dancing together, that's faith development. And last fall, when we made stone soup together and everyone gave a little piece of themselves and together we made something bigger and better than any of us could have made on our own. That was faith development too. And when Rev Jenner, I stand up here and tell a story about a Unitarian or a Universalist from our past, and we think about how does their history impact us today, that too is faith development. That's right. Faith development doesn't just happen back there. 
It happens in here, too. And in other rooms, when we're at a board meeting and we're discussing what we want for the com coming year, how we want to focus on our vision, increase our visibility in the community, and be known as a church full of vitality, we are developing our own Unitarian Universalist faith. When we serve as a coffee hour host, we restock the pews, we do some landscape work, that's still faith development. When we attend a religious education class, join a book discussion at church, or learn a new skill in a workshop, more faith development. When we march in a parade, when we show up at a pro-democracy rally, when we participate in a community tree planting event, we are all working. So if we're constantly working and developing our UU faith, maybe we should spend some time thinking about what our faith says and what does it ask of us. That's what the kids are doing today. In this congregation, the children and youth have a lovely ritual that was started by my predecessor, Amy Pop, where every September, on the Sunday following in-gathering, we host a fruit and chocolate communion. Everyone is invited to bring a fruit to share. We sort them out by color, and we match those colors to our UU values. In the past, we've used the seven principles, and this year, we're exploring the proposed change to the six values that are rooted in love. You may have seen this image from our Article 2 proposed revisions. The kids will be naming the values of interdependence, justice, equity, generosity, pluralism, and transformation. They'll talk about what those values mean to them and what it means that they're all rooted in love. But for the kids, it might be a little bit easier for them to understand if we make it a little more concrete. Their fruit symbolizes the colors of the rainbow. They prepare them just like they prepare their values in themselves. They'll notice that all of their fruits are held together in a big bowl of love, and that without the love, things would get real messy real fast. Moving on to the chocolate, maybe my favorite part, both tangibly and metaphorically, the chocolate represents the covenant that we all agree to. The kids will have a conversation about covenant. So many big words. What is it? Why do we use it? Covenants can be tricky. They're not simply a list of rules of do's and don'ts. There are hopes for how we'll be together in community. They're aspirational. How we want to be on our best days, at our best moments. And we know because, as Martin Buber says, we are a promise-making, promise-breaking, and promise-renewing people. We know we're going to miss the mark sometimes. And our covenant lets us back in. 
forgiveness, recommitting yourself to the group, and belonging, the chocolate in the fruit and chocolate communion is where the magic is. So that's the curriculum today. That's what the kids are working on. But it won't be the same for all of them. You see, we're all at different places on our journey. This slide has a way of thinking about how we're at different places. For some, today will be a new experience. Their faith is being caught. They're learning the traditions we celebrate, figuring out the lingo, and they're just getting used to hearing those words, much like our new visitors of any age. Then, they're the ones who've been around RE programs for a few years. They're like, oh yeah, we, we do this here, okay. I got this, I got this. And they start to work on some big ideas. Not too deep yet. Maybe they can recite some chalice lightings. Maybe they have a favorite UU story. They're adding to their vocabularies. Their faith is being taught. Next are the bigger kids. Adolescents, for the most part, or folks who've been around the church for long enough to really feel like they understand what we're talking about. Now they're asking, but what does it mean to me? How does that show up in my life? At stage three, we are buying into our faith. We'll be leaning on these adolescents to lead some discussions back there today. What do those values mean to you? How are you generous? What does a world that believes in justice look like? Big, juicy questions. And stage four, beautiful, complicated, Stage four. Things aren't very comfortable at stage four. All that applying our faith to our lives can make us question some things. Question ourselves. Question others. Question what you've been taught in the past. Those, challenge, those questions challenge us to dig deep for answers. And as we search, we might not find answers right away. It might just feel like more questions are coming. It takes work, long, hard work. And sometimes when we're in the middle of that work, we look over. And there's some shiny other faith over there. And it's like, oh, they got the answers. Maybe that one's for me. This stage, more than any others, asks us, to be patient with ourselves as we search. You are the only one who knows where your path goes. I don't write a lesson plan for stage four, but I pull up a chair, I fill a cup of coffee, and I hang out with someone who's searching. Notice, all of these stages, there's work being done. Working to trust, to learn, to apply, and to search. Maybe because faith development isn't just for the kids, you see yourself at one of these stages, maybe at a few of these stages, because we can slide up and down. Being a church community full of vitality, focused on making the vision of our liberal religious faith more and more visible in the world, 
will take a lot of faith development for all of us. So next time I head down that hall, or you happen upon me with a pile of yarn, or splashing around with the kiddos, or goodness knows what else I'll be doing, you'll know that what I'm working on is faith development. So now, for our closing hymn, we have a little more faith development for all of us. If you could take out the teal hymnal, I know we don't do this usually, and turn to hymn 1017. Today, and you can rise as you're willing or able. Um, today, we're going to sing along to a video because sometimes we can all use a little help. I can use a little help when I'm singing. It's the uh, UU Society of Grafton and Upton in Massachusetts, and their band and choir will lead us, and Kathy and I will be up here as well. Today, we're going to sing verses 1, 3, 4, and 1. No verse 2. And if you lose the place, we have lovely accompaniment. <laughs> All right. We are building a new way. We are building a new way. We are building a new way, feeling stronger every day. We are building a new way. We can feed our every need. Not everything that came out of the pandemic was bad. I would like to invite Steve Fairbanks up to extinguish the chalice for us.
We have basked in the warmth and beauty of this flame and this community. As the chalice flame is extinguished, let us carry its glow within. Let us kindle new sparks within these walls and beyond. Mindful of our highest aspirations, bound by common faith and purpose, and yet beginning with ourselves just as we are, let us take one more step together. Our worship has ended. Let your service begin.